Ever heard that going into ketosis is just the body going into starvation mode? Well, let's debunk that myth right from the get-go. To understand the difference between ketosis and starvation mode, we first need to look at what each of these terms means. Ketosis is a metabolic state where the body, instead of using glucose from carbohydrates, switches to using fat for fuel. It's like your body's backup generator kicking in when carbohydrate intake is low. On the other hand, starvation mode is a survival mechanism that the body employs when calorie intake is drastically reduced. It's the body's way of conserving energy by slowing down the metabolic rate and reducing the number of calories burnt. While both ketosis and starvation mode may occur when the body doesn't have enough glucose from carbohydrates, they are fundamentally different. So, in reality, ketosis is not starvation mode, but a natural and efficient way for the body to utilize energy from fat. Before we delve deeper, it's important to note that this video is for educational purposes only. While we strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, it's essential to remember that every individual's health journey is unique. Therefore, this video should not be used as a substitute for professional medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare provider before embarking on a new diet or health plan. Now, with that out of the way, let's get back to breaking down more ketosis myths. Another common myth is that ketosis is harmful to the body. Time for some facts. Let's dive into the science behind ketosis. Contrary to popular belief, ketosis is a natural metabolic state. It occurs when the body starts breaking down fats for energy because it doesn't have enough carbohydrates to use. This process produces molecules called ketones, which your body can use as a quick and efficient source of fuel. But isn't burning fat a good thing? Certainly, especially for those looking to shed a few pounds. A study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that individuals following a ketogenic diet lost more weight compared to those on a low-fat diet. So, ketosis can actually aid in weight loss. Now you might be thinking, what about brain function? Well, you're in for a surprise, your brain can run on ketones too. In fact, during periods of fasting or intense exercise, ketones provide up to 70% of the brain's energy needs. This can lead to improved focus and cognitive performance. A study in the journal Neurobiology of Aging found that a ketogenic diet improved cognitive function in individuals with mild cognitive impairment. Moreover, ketosis has been shown to play a role in disease prevention. Research in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition suggests that a ketogenic diet may help manage neurological disorders like epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease. It has also been associated with lower blood sugar levels, which can be beneficial for individuals with type 2 diabetes. However, it's crucial to remember that while ketosis has potential benefits, it's not for everyone. Always consult with a healthcare professional before making significant changes to your diet. You want to ensure that you're maintaining a balanced and nutritious intake of food. So, contrary to the myth, ketosis can actually be beneficial to the body when done correctly and under proper guidance. One of the biggest misconceptions about the keto diet is that it means no carbs at all. Let's clarify that. Now, it's true that the ketogenic diet is a low-carb diet, but it's not a zero-carb diet. The idea is to limit your intake of carbohydrates, not completely eliminate them. This is because our goal is to encourage the body to enter a state of ketosis, where it burns fat for fuel, instead of relying primarily on carbohydrates. You see, when we consume fewer carbs, our bodies need to find another source of energy. This is when our liver steps up to the plate, converting fat into ketones, a type of acid that our bodies can use as fuel. This metabolic state is what we call ketosis. But let's get back to the point. Carbs. We need to consume nutrient-dense, low-carb foods. We're talking about foods like leafy greens, avocados, nuts, seeds, and certain dairy products. These foods are not only low in carbs, but they're also packed with essential vitamins and minerals that our bodies need to function optimally. And let's not forget about fiber. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate, but it doesn't raise your blood sugar levels like other carbs do. Instead, it passes through your body undigested, helping with digestion and keeping you feeling full. Many high-fiber foods, like broccoli and chia seeds, are also low in net carbs, making them a great choice for the keto diet. So, while you'll be consuming fewer carbs on a keto diet, you're not removing them entirely. Instead, you're focusing on consuming carbs that provide the most nutritional bang for your buck. It's not just about limiting carbs, but about choosing the ones that offer the most benefits to your body. Remember, a well-formulated ketogenic diet is not a zero-carb diet. It's a diet that prioritizes quality over quantity, focusing on nutrient-dense foods that are low in carbs and high in fiber. So no, the keto diet doesn't mean zero carbs, it just means smarter carbs. 
Some people believe that the keto diet is all about high protein. Let's get the facts straight. When you think of the ketogenic or keto diet you might imagine a plate heaped with juicy steaks and crispy bacon. This mental image has led many to the assumption that the keto diet is a high protein diet. But let's clear up this common misconception. The truth is, while protein is an essential part of the keto diet, it's not the star of the show. Let's dive a little deeper. The keto diet is a low-carb, high-fat diet with protein playing a supporting role. Picture it like a theatrical performance where fats are the lead actor, carbohydrates are the stagehands, and proteins? They're the crucial supporting cast, providing the balance needed for a stellar performance. In a typical ketogenic diet, about 60 to 75% of your calories come from fats, and only about 15 to 30% come from proteins. The remaining 5 to 10%, that's where the carbs come in. So, while protein is certainly part of the performance, it's not taking center stage. But why this specific distribution you may ask? Well, the high fat content is designed to put your body into a state of ketosis, where it's burning fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates. Protein, on the other hand, is there to help maintain muscle mass and support other bodily functions. Consuming too much protein might cause your body to convert the excess into glucose which can knock you out of ketosis. So, remember, while protein is an essential part of the keto diet, it's not the main focus. Think of it as a balancing act. Too much of anything, even something as vital as protein, can tilt the scales and throw off the balance. In conclusion, the keto diet is a carefully choreographed dietary dance, where fats take the lead, proteins play a supporting role, and carbs make up the ensemble. So the keto diet isn't a high-protein diet, but rather a high-fat, moderate-protein and low-carb diet. We've debunked some common myths about ketosis today and hopefully enlightened you about the facts. Isn't it fascinating how science can sometimes turn our assumptions on their head? And that's exactly why it's so important to keep learning and questioning. Now if you found this information useful, think about how many others could benefit from it too. Maybe you know someone who's considering a keto diet, or perhaps someone who's been misguided by some of these myths. Let's help them cut through the noise by sharing this video. And while you're at it, why not give us a thumbs up if you've learned something new today. Your likes help us understand what content you value, and it also helps more people discover our videos. But we're not stopping here. Oh no, we've got plenty more myth-busting, fact-checking content coming your way. We'll continue diving into the science behind popular health trends, diets, and wellness practices. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to know when we drop our next video. Remember, knowledge is power, and sharing it helps empower others. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more myth-busting and facts about health and wellness.